In this video, we're going to do our first example of finding the area bounded by a polar curve. We're asked to find the area of a finite region bounded by the curve with a given polar equation and the half lines theta is equal to alpha and theta is equal to beta. We've got r is equal to a cos theta, alpha is equal to zero, beta is equal to pi by two. We need a general formula and that is as follows. It's going to be one half the integral from alpha to beta of r squared d theta. And it's nice and straightforward. It almost kind of rhymes. It sort of rolls off. But it's, it's logical. We may even look at uh, deriving it later if we manage to have some time. I always like to just sketch these up. You don't need to sketch them up, but it will give you some idea. We can also use the properties of these curves often being symmetric. So when they're involving cosines and sines, cosine is going to be symmetric about the x-axis, a sine is going to be symmetric about the y-axis. In our last video we looked at sketching these and this one right here is going to give us a circle center now a over 2 okay and it's going to look something like that so we can have this center here which is going to be a over 2. Just to give you an idea you don't have to draw these but having some appreciation may help you later on. So what we're interested in is from the half line, this is the half line of 0 and this is the half line of pi by 2. So all we're looking for now is the following area. So let's see if we can uh, do that. Let's, it, we want this stuff right here. So all of this round here and so on and so forth. Okay, so it looks a bit messy but you kind of get the idea. And you can see now by symmetry that if we wanted the whole thing, we could just evaluate from 0 to pi by 2 and double it up. So let's write this then. What we want then is 1 half, and we're going to write this as 1 half the integral from 0 to pi by 2. They're the values I've been given of r squared. Well, r squared is going to be a squared cos squared theta, and then we're integrating with respect to theta. Any time I have a constant, I take it to the left-hand side of the integral sign. So what I've now got, I rewrite this as a squared over 2, the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of cos squared d theta. Okay, so cos squared theta d theta. Right, let's think about how we can integrate cos squared theta. I know a trig identity that says cos 2 theta is equal to 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Adding 1 to both sides and dividing by 2, cos squared theta will be equal to 1 half the quantity cos 2 theta plus 1. So, subbing that in, and I'm going to again bring my constant the other side of the integral sign, a squared over 4, the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of cos 2 theta plus 1, and we're integrating with respect to theta. So this gives us a nice straightforward problem, well, straight if, there's, if that's not an oxymoron. Um, a squared over 4, we're going from 0 to pi by 2, and now I'm going to be evaluating 1 half sine 2 theta, that is the integral of cos 2 theta plus theta. So all we need to do now is evaluate that, fairly straightforward, a squared over 4 on the outside. We'll start now with pi by 2. Sine of two lots of pi by 2 is the sine of pi. The sine of pi is 0. Then we've got theta. Well, theta is plus pi by 2. So we can put that in. And then subtract and write the lower limits. Sine of 0 is 0. Theta, if theta is 0, is going to give us 0. So we're left with the following. So multiplying through, we're going to now have a squared pi by 8. Or pi a squared by 8. And that's going to be now in units squared. And there's our answer. If we wanted to find the whole circle, all we do is double that up. So I'd be more inclined just to simply, instead of putting half here, I would run it from 0 to pi by 2. And instead of halving it, just leave it as a whole. So there we go. Um, finding the area bounded by a polar curve. In the next few videos, we'll look at some more challenging problems when we've got bits to cut out and mess about with. But hopefully that's given you a nice insight.